good day students once again i will be doing this question one on chapter 11 of the cost and management accounting two textbook and this is based on production on operational budgets once again and it is just a question that was out of 19 marks based on the exam that it was set for so now we start with this question on operational budget and it shows us another dimension on how you can be tested on operational budgets it says a company and it says a company fair a company future ltd produces two products uh, which is product normally A1 and product A2. Here are the products that this company is producing, A1 and B2. The following budgeted information for the next year, which is the year 2015, has been determined <clears throat> to prepare the master budget. So now this is the information that is given to us so that we can be able to compile a master budget. Number one says that the standard cost card to produce one completed unit of product A1 and B2 is given to us below. So now this is the standard cost card for the cost per unit or in order to complete the cost per unit. And these are the products that we have, product A1 and product A2. And we are given material, which is material X. That means these products, they need material for them to be complete. In, and the material <coughs> that is needed, in fact, for every product, it requires a certain material or components for it to be complete. And for product A1, product A1 needs or requires 39 kgs of material. And each kg of such material is bought at 13th rand or budgeted to be bought at 13th rand. And product B2 is requiring or requires 48 kgs of material which that is also bought at 13 rand per kg. So now it means the cost price per kg is the same to all these uh, products. Then now it <coughs> further says that we have our direct labor. Then our direct labor, there are two direct labors, which is the skilled labor and the unskilled labor. Or the unskilled labor and the skilled labor so now these are the two direct labors that we have and the unskilled labor takes 10 hours to complete one unit of product a1 and the skilled labor takes six hours to complete the same product which is product a1 then these employees are paid two different uh, rates per hour the unskilled laborers they are being paid 12 rand per hour obviously because they are not skilled however the skilled ones they are being paid 20 rand per hour obviously these are the specialists they are skilled their rate is a bit higher than that of the unskilled ones and they are being paid 20 rand per hour whenever they are doing product a1 and in the case of uh, the unskilled labors with regards to the second product and in case of the skilled labors we can see that the skilled labors uh, unskilled labors in fact they take five hours to complete one unit of b2 and they are being paid the same rate as 12 rand because they are unskilled however the skilled labors for product b2 they take five hours to complete the product and they are being paid the same rate which is 20 rand because they are skilled in order to complete the second product which is product b2 so now this is the information we have uh, regarding the standard cost card per unit then after they further tell us that 
uh, under number two that budgeted inventories are as follows so now we are to start or view what is their budgeted inventory and we have opening inventory they say this is opening inventories that means it is inventory of completed units and inventory of uh, raw material then after we have closing inventory so that means they give us both the opening and the closing inventory for us and they say on the 1st of january 2015 and 31st of december 2015 so now these are the opening inventory on the 1st of january and closing inventory on the 31st of december remember all the openings and the closing will be needed whenever we do our budgets starting from the production budgets uh, and the material budget and those will be needed therefore now they say finished goods so now we have inventory of finished goods or inventory of completed units and that is inventory with regard to product a1 is 400 units opening inventory on the 1st of january and 500 units which is closing inventory at the end of the accounting period then product B2 has 800 units of inventory at the beginning of the year, which is January 2015, and 1,100 units at the end of the accounting period, which is December 2015. That becomes closing inventory. Then after, we are lastly given the material at the beginning of the period, and that means opening, in, opening inventory of material is 67,000 kgs of material at the beginning of the year, which is the 1st of January. Then after we have 74,500 kgs of the raw material, which is material X, at the end of December in the year 2015. So now we are given all the materials the opening and the closing that means we don't have to worry about the calculations in terms of what is the opening and what is the closing they are already given to us which makes things a bit simpler for us so now let us go and continue and check what next are we given then under number three they tell us that budgeted sales are as follows and these are the sales for the products that we sell, sales for product A1, and we estimate to sell 4,800 units. These are the expected or estimated sales, and the estimated market price for these sales is 950. That means the selling price or the expected selling price per unit will be 950. And for product B2, we expect to sell 6400 units and these units will be sold at an expected market selling price of 1100 and remember all this information will help us when we do our sales budget and sales budget we know that it is a very simple budget you just say estimated sales you multiply that by the selling price and you multiply that by the selling price that means even from here we can know how much will be our sales budgets for the two products which will be 4800 times that by 950 that means our sales budget will be 4,560,000 for product A1 then for product A2 it will be 6400 we multiply this by 1100 and it will give us 7,040,000 rands so now this will be the sales value or the value of the sales that we expect to make by the end of the year in total however we'll still do the sales budget if it is required officially and we do all this in a formal table then after it says we prepare the following budgets for the next year which is the year 2015 then the first budget to prepare it is the sales budget the one we have just done now it's working so now let us just do that in a formal way then we draw the sales budget in a table format and this is number a where we do the sales budget and our sales budget is for the two products that this company is making which is product a1 and product b2 then we always have to write the names of the product on top then after we start with the estimated sales and we write the 
the units that are expected to be sold or are estimated to be sold and we know that our estimated sales it is 4800 for product A1 and 6400 for product A2 it is 4800 and 6400 and we say multiply that by selling price per unit and we know that our selling price per unit is an amount of 950 and here it is an amount of 1100 rands which is the selling price per unit that means each unit will be sold for product a1 950 and product a2 1100 then this will give us the amount of the budgeted sales however you call it still the same or sales value this will be the budgeted sales budgeted sales or sales value then that will be calculated as we already know that here it will be seven million and forty thousand seven million and forty thousand the first one is four thousand eight hundred times that by nine hundred and fifty it will give us four million five hundred and sixty thousand rands so now that will be our budgeted sales for for the year 2015 so now we can also do the total although normally there will be a total on the last column then the total will be the sum of the two which is four million five sixty thousand plus seven million and forty thousand then this will give us our total sales as one million one hundred and one million one triple six zero so now that will be eleven million six hundred thousand that will be our total sales eleven million six hundred thousand this will be our total sales in total we normally write this under the last column where we have the total and we write the total sales here and this amount goes there under total but because of the limitation of space however we see how much is the total of our sales then after we go and check the second budget which is a uh, requirement number b and we see how our uh, what are we required to do in requirement number b requirement number b we are required to do a production budget a production budget for both products which is product a1 and product b2 so now we start with the production budget and we know that this budget starts with the expected sales production budget then we have two products that we have which is products a1 and product b2 product a1 and product b2 these are the two products that we have and with this we will also remember that the last column there will be a total let me just write that total column because i normally forget then after we have the total column then we are doing our production budget and we know that this budget starts with the this budget starts with the estimated sales or the number of units that we estimate to sell we say estimated sales our estimated sales we know that it is 4800 and 6400 then from there we add our closing inventory always add the closing inventory because closing inventory are the units that would have been produced in the current period because we are doing a production budget we want to know how many units must be produced in the current year or in the current accounting period or in the current budget period because we are doing a budget so now we say closing inventory must be added because closing inventory are the units that would have been produced in the current budget period but would not have been sold by the end of the period 
so now we draw a line here then we add all the closing inventory that we have remember this is closing inventory of the finished units we are dealing with the finished units and our finished units we have the closing inventory of the finished units which is 1500 for product a1 there's product a1 that is the closing inventory which is 500 units and product b2 we have closing inventory of 1100 units which is inventory at the end of december in the year 2015 so we have 500 and 1100 so we say 500 and 1100 these are the units that will be left at the end of the period as they are shown in the information provided to us so now we have written the closing inventory then we add the two that will give us units required then we say 4800 plus 500 this will give us 5300 units these are the units that are required units required these are the units that are required to be produced then after we have to say 6400 plus 1100 and this will give us 7500 units that are required for production then after we less our closing inventory remember now these are the units that are required for production that means these are the units that are needed to be produced in the current year but now in the units that are required we <coughs> have included in those units the opening inventory therefore now opening inventory must be removed because opening inventory would have been produced obviously in the previous accounting period and whenever inventory was produced and becomes an opening inventory we don't have to produce that again because it was already produced in the previous accounting period that is why closing inventory is always subtracted so now that is why we have to say closing inventory and we subtract our closing inventory because it would have been produced in the previous accounting period Though we require these units in the current year, but others were already produced, therefore now we need to deduct what was already produced in the previous accounting period. So now we say less our, sorry, less our opening inventory. Don't know why am I saying closing. Less our opening inventory. So now we less our opening inventory. And that opening inventory, it is given to us because it is given to us and we just have to deduct that opening and here is the opening inventory which is <clears throat> opening inventory of 400 and opening inventory of 800 units on the 1st of january which is beginning of the year there is 400 units that will be opening for product a1 and 800 units at the beginning of the year for product b2 so now we write those units as opening as they are, which is 400 units and, and 800 units at the end of the period. So now they are negative. Then after we say our units required less the opening inventory, that will give us 6,700 units. These are the units that must be produced in the current budget period for product b2 for product b1 is 5300 less 400 and this will give us 4900 units that need to be produced in the current production period <clears throat> therefore now this will give us the production requirement this will give us production requirement that means these are the units that are required to be produced in the current accounting period production requirement then after we draw a line here then we are done with this budget we don't have to write the total for the budget units we normally write the total for only for the cost a uh, budget where there is value of money just like in the case of of our sales budget the total at the end becomes a necessity for you to write the total under the total column 
So now we go to the next budget and we see what next are we required to do. So now in the next uh, budget, we are required under number C to prepare a direct material purchases budget. That means we are doing our direct material purchases budget. And whenever you do this budget, you need to ask yourself, how many materials do you have? Of which, in this case, we only have one material. Which material is that? That is a direct material, which is material X. There is no other material. However, though we have material X, we have two products, which is product A1 and product B2. And both of these products, they require the same material, which is material X. And this material X is in cages. So now we know that we'll only have one column because there's only one material and two products that require the same material. So now when we do the material purchases budget, we'll only have one column. Therefore, now we allocate that material to the two products that we have. So now let us just start on the new page in case there is the limitation of the space. Therefore, now we do the next budget, which is number C, the material purchase budget. Material purchase budget. And our material purchase budget will be only material X. It will only be material X because there's only one material that we have. If we had two materials, therefore, now we'll have to record to those two materials. And this material is in cages. That means at the end of the day, we want to know how many cages of material must be purchased in order to manufacture, in order to manufacture 4,900 units of product A1 and in order to manufacture 6,800 units of 6,700 units of product B2. So now at the end, we need to know all these total cages. <clears throat> this is in cages. Therefore, now we start with the production requirements. We start with the production requirements. Don't forget production requirements or production required. Therefore, now we see how much is our production requirement. Remember, our production requirement is per product. Let us go and check. We have production requirement for product A1. Here is the production requirement, which is 4,900 units. For which product? For product A1. So now let us start with the product A1, where we do the allocation now, or the calculation of the material. Let us start with the units of the product A1. Remember what we do, we say units required times by the cages per unit. We say, let me just put this in a different color. When we do this, we say units required. Units required. We multiply this by cages per unit. That's what we are doing in order to get to the total cages that are needed to produce uh, product A1 and product uh, B2. So now we say, in the case of product B2, product A1, first start with the product A1 because product A1 is the first product. Then we say product A1, how many cages are needed for product A1? We know that product A1 requires a certain number of cages per unit. Product A1, let us check, product A1 requires 39 cages of my, of, of the same material. Therefore, now we say, how much are the units that are required? Units required or production required? Units required for product A1, it is 4,800. These are the units that are required for production. These are the units that are needed to be produced, in other words. So now, out of those units, units we multiply them by the 39 kgs per unit. We multiply that by 39 kgs which is that 39 kgs, it is per unit. Then after we multiply that, it will give us the total kgs of material that <clears throat> are needed to manufacture 4,800 units. Then you say times that by 39, it gives us 
110 to 91,100 kgs. It is 191,100 kgs. So now these are the kgs of product A that are needed. These are the kgs of product A that are needed to manufacture 4,800 units. Therefore, now we go to the other cages, which are the cages of product uh, B2. So now we say our next product, it is product B2. Our next product, it is product B2. And product B2 also requires cages. We know that product B2 also requires cages. Let us check. Yes, product B2 requires 48 kgs of the same material, material X. So now, because we are looking for the kgs of material, which is the same material X, that is why now we have to write everything in the same column, which is the column of material X. This is the column where we record the material X for this products. Therefore, now we see how many units that are required for production. The units that are required for production for product B2, it is 6,700 units of product B2 that are required for production. This is a production requirement. So now that is why we have the right to say 6,700 units that are required. And we multiply this by the number of cages that are required per unit. How many cages that are required per unit? It is 48 cages per unit per unit of product B2. So now we multiply that by the cages so that we get the total cages that are needed to manufacture 6,700 cages per unit. So now we say 6,700. We multiply this by 48. Then it will give us the total cages that we are looking for. And this will be 321,600 cages. So now these are the cages that are needed. That means we need 321,600 cages of material X in order to manufacture 6,700 units that are required to be produced in the current budget period. So now this is what it means. Therefore now from here, we can just add the two, then we get to the material required or production required. So, my sorry, material required. Therefore, now we add the two, throw a line here, then we get to material required, which is the total material, which is material X that is required. Material required. This is the material that is required which is 321,600 plus 191,100. And this will give us 512,700 kgs of material X that are needed to manufacture the 6,700 units and the 4,800 units. Then after we say there was material that we don't need to buy, which was already in the beginning of the period, which is the opening. Remember, we always subtract the opening. The opening will always be subtracted. However, there is material which is 7,500 that will, will remain at the end of this period, which would have been bought in the current accounting or budget period. So now it means we have first have to add our closing of 74,500. Then after we subtract the opening because the opening would have been bought in the previous accounting period. And when we started this year, it was already in the storage. So now that is why we say plus our closing because the closing would have been bought in the current accounting period. Closing inventory. This is closing inventory of material. Closing inventory. And this is inventory of material because we are doing material budget. Is material. So now we check how much is our closing inventory. And our closing inventory, it is 74,500 kgs. And this is still kgs, 74,500 kgs. And we draw the line then after we say plus 74,500 kgs. And this will give us 
a total of 587,200 cages, a total of 5,810,72,587,200 cages. These are the total cages of material, total cages required, total material cages, total material cages that are required so now these are the total cages that are required however inclusive in these total cages is the opening material that was bought last year which we don't need that so now we have to say less opening material opening material which is opening invent of material and we say opening invent of material we say opening inventory, which is the invent of material. You don't have to write this in brackets. I just want you to be clear. So now we less our opening material, which is 67,000 cages, if my memory serves me. I think it was 67,000 cages. Yes, it was opening 67,000 cages. Therefore, now we, we, we subtract that. Then this will give us material purchases. This will give us material purchases, which is material that needs to be purchased. Material purchases. Material purchases. Remember, this is in cages. This is material purchases in cages. Therefore, now we see less 67,000 cages of material this will give us 520,200 cages these are the cages that need to be purchased after we have deducted that which is an opening inventory and now from here what do we do we multiply this is the material uh, budget in cages or in units it ends here therefore now we start a new budget which is material budget in value when now we say multiply this by cost per unit we multiply this by cost per unit and our cost per sorry cost per kg not per unit our cost per kg we have to check how much the cost per kg if the cost per kg are different i don't think they are different the cost per kg remains the same because we buy the same material now here was the cost per kg and our cost per kg for product product a1 yes material one product a1 is costing 13 rand per kg and still 13 rand per kg and the reason one the why the price is the same is because we are buying the same material it is the same material which is material x so now it remains the same the kg per unit of the cost per kg will remain the same because we buy the same material in the same cages. So now it will be 13 rand, meaning we have to multiply here by 13 rand per kg. Then after this will give us uh, material purchases in value or in rent. Then this will give us material purchases or total material purchases. If we want to do so, total material purchases total material purchases in rent so we know that this is in rent or the value then after we say times this by 13 it will give us six hundred six million seven hundred ten sixty two thousand six million seven hundred ten sixty two thousand six hundred and this will be the cages of material this will be the cost of material in total, in fact. So now this budget is completed. And from here now, we can check what next budget are we then required to do. And we start with that budget immediately. So now after this, we go and check to our requirements. We are then now required to do the next budget. And that next budget is number D. And number D say that a labor budget for product A1 only. Remember, this is for.
product A1. We are doing a labor budget only for product A1. And please be mindful that there are two types of labors. We have the unskilled labors and the skilled labors. We need to be mindful of that. So now it means we will have to have two columns because there are two types of labors and these labors uh, are, uh, require different hours to complete uh, the same unit of a product. Uh, the unskilled one, we mentioned that it takes 10 hours for the unskilled labors to complete one unit of product A1 and it takes six hours to complete one unit of product A1 uh, with regard to the skilled labors. Then we also highlighted that the unskilled labors take five hours to complete one unit of product B2 and the skilled labors takes five hours to complete product B2. So now these labors, they are also paid different rate, 12 rand for the unskilled, 12 rand for the unskilled and 20 rand for the skilled and 20 rand for the skilled for product A1 and product B2 respectively. So now let us do our labor budget for the two for the two uh, types of labors that we have and this is number e where we do the labor budget this is number e where we do the labor budget so now we say number e labor budget labor budget Our labor budget is divided into unskilled and skilled. Is divided into unskilled. And after we have skilled, <clears throat> then I also not want to forget the column of the total. Therefore, now we say units required or production requirements units required or production requirements or units to be produced however you call it units to be produced units to be produced i just want to change the language units to be produced is how many units we know the 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 production requirements these are the units that are to be produced nine thousand 400 and 6,700. However, we are only required to do the labor budget for one product. Which product is that? It's only for one product. For A1, for product A1, that's what we are required. Only for product A1. So now we are only doing the labor budget for product A1, which is only for product A1. Therefore now, it means we are only focusing on product A1 that means the 4,900 units that need to be produced, which is for product A1. So now that is our focus. Therefore, now we are able to say units to be produced for product A1 is 4,800 for the unskilled labors and 4,800 for the skilled labors. Then after we say how many hours does it takes to complete one unit of product A1 when uh, with regard to the unskilled labors? Or how many hours do the unskilled labors take to complete one unit of product A1? We know that unskilled labors, they take more time, which is 10 hours to complete one unit of product A1. Yet it is 10 hours that it, ta it take by the unskilled labors to complete one product which is product a1 therefore now we have to record those 10 hours it will be 10 hours and unskilled labors take the number of hours which is which is okay we we, we are done with that they they take 10 hours therefore now it will be 10 hours throughout which is or now we go to the skilled ones we are done with the unskilled ones the skilled ones take six hours to complete one unit of product A1. So now we go to the skilled ones, the skilled employees or the skilled laborers take six hours to complete one unit. Therefore now under skilled, we say six, then we say times by labor hours per unit. 
times that by labor hours per unit. Then we draw a line in between and we draw a line throughout and we draw a line and we draw a line. The neatness, guys, for me is always not something to worry about. 4,800, we multiply this by 10, it will definitely give us 48,000 hours. That means we need 38,000 hours of the unskilled labors. 38,000 hours of the unskilled labors in order to manufacture and complete the 4,800 units that are needed to be produced. Then after we again still have to multiply for the skilled labors. The skilled labors is 4,800 times that by 6 and it will give us 28,800 hours. <laughs> that means we say times that by 6 it needs let me just uh, recalculate that 4,800 times that by 6 that means we get 28,800 that means we this 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 company or the the, the skilled laborers need 28,800 hours in order to complete manufacturing 4,800 units that are needed for production so now let us continue with that and just check if uh, sorry sorry for that this is 4900 not 4800 my bad okay we have 4800 not 4900 i have just done a mistake here this is 4,900, 4,900, this is 6. Uh, apologies for that, I just look at the wrong figures. Okay, here is the production, yeah, I, I looked at the wrong amount, but at the right amount, but I just wrote the wrong amount. I wrote that for 0.8, which is estimated sales. So now we still, the concepts is still the same. We say 4,900 times that by 10 which gives us 49,000 hours and this will be 4,900 which will give us 6 times that by 6 we get to 29,400 we get to 29,400 therefore now this will give us total labor hours this will give us total labor hours or total estimated labor hours because this is an estimate total budgeted or estimated labor hours total budgeted or estimated labor hours labor hours which is 49,000 which means as i have already emphasized it before that uh, this company requires 49,800 unskilled labor hours in order to manufacture 4,900 units then after it also requires 29,400 uh, hours of the skilled labors in order to manufacture the required units which is 4,900 units so now that is our total labor hours then after we have to multiply by the labor rate per hour Multiply that by labor rate per hour. Multiply that by labor rate per hour. We know that the unskilled labors, they are being paid 12 rand and the skilled labors, they are being paid 20 rand. So now let us check if that is correct. Yes, the unskilled labors are being paid 12 rand per hour, which is unskilled labors being paid 12 rand per hour but the skilled ones they are being paid 20 rand per hour in order to produce product a1 and we are doing a budget for product a1 so now hence i recorded 12 rand and 20 rand then after we can draw a line and we multiply that therefore now it will be 29,400 times by 20 that will give us 
a total of 588,000 rands. And after we say 12 rand times by 49,000 hours, that will give us 58,800 rands. That will give us 58,800 rands. Then we let me just recalculate that. 49,000, we turned that by 12, okay, it gave us 588,000, then that will be the total estimated labor cost, that will be a total estimated labor cost, total estimated labor cost, total estimated labor cost, then after we add the two, we say 500 plus 588,000. And after we have added that, it will give us the total of 1,176,000 rands. 1,176,000 rands. Okay, 1,176,000 rands. So now that is what will go under total columns. The rest, they don't go under total. It's only the last amount that will get to be recorded under total columns. So now that was the budget, which is the labor budget. Then now after we are done with the labor budget, then we can go to the next budget requirement. And the next budget requirement, which is the last budget, we did labor now. They say calculate the variable, take note of that. Calculate the variable direct cost per unit for each one of the two products. Set your answer logically or set your answer logically. So now in this case, we are required to calculate the cost per unit. Only they said for variable direct, that is, that, that is very important for variable direct cost per unit. Remember variable direct cost, that is direct material and direct labor because direct material is a variable cost and direct labor is a variable cost. So now that means we have to calculate the cost per unit only adding direct material and direct labor for the two products. We have to take note of that. So now that is number E, no, number F that we are doing, which is the last budget that we are doing. So we are doing variable production cost per unit. Variable production cost per unit. Variable production cost per unit. production cost per unit and our variable production cost per unit is for both the products product A1 and product B2 product A1 and product B2 and we draw a line so that you are able to do our answer in a logical way. So now we know that our variable cost, it is direct material and direct labor. It is direct material and direct labor. <clears throat> our direct material, we first have to allocate direct material for product A1 and direct material for product A2. So now let us start with product A1 first, where we do allocation for product A1. And we say product A1 requires 39 kgs of material, and those 39 kgs are costing the business 13 rent. And product A2, this is A1, this is B2, just for you to see. Product B2, I think it requires 48 cages, and those 48 cages are incurred at a price of, or at a cost of 13 rand. Let us just go and check that, and I still remember this info. Let us check how much is the cost for these units and how much are the cages per unit. Here we have our materials for product A1. Product A1 requires 39 kgs of material per unit. 
and these cages are paid at 13 rand so now if you say 13 rand per unit or per kg turned by the 39 kgs per unit that will give us the direct material cost per unit of product a1 and product b2 requires 48 kgs therefore now we say 48 kgs times by the price per kg which is 13 rand per kg that is what exactly i just have done therefore now we allocate those cost per unit to the respective products then after we say 39 kgs times that by 13 it will give us 507 507 rands then after we say 48 times that by 13 it will give us 624 624 these are the direct material for product a1 and product a2 that we have allocated here direct material there was the material direct material material which is at cost per unit and material cost per kg in fact then we multiply that and we got to the direct material cost per unit. Then after we go to direct labor, we go to direct labor. And we know that our direct labors are divided. Direct labor. When we come to our direct labor, we have unskilled labors without the skill. And when it comes to the unskilled ones, we have to separate them again. They are unskilled laborers who are producing the product, which is product A1, and the unskilled for product A2, B2. The unskilled laborers, it takes 10 hours for them to complete one unit of product A1. Then you say the number of hours times by the rate to get to the direct labor cost per unit. So this will be 10 hours times by 12 rand per hour. That will give us the direct labor, the unskilled labor cost per unit. So now we say 10 hours times that by 12, times that by 12 rand, that will give us the total unskilled labor cost per unit, which will be... 10 hours of the unskilled labors times by 12 rand then this will give us 120 that will be a total of 120 then after we say how many hours does the skilled labor take to complete one unit of of the product which is product a1 okay which we are first let me confirm that we are looking at the unskilled ones unskilled one so now we look for the unskilled workers how many hours do the unskilled workers take to complete the second product which is product b2 the unskilled workers takes five hours to complete one unit of product b2 and they are being paid 12 rand so now we are still focusing on the unskilled remember then we say five times that by the same rate because we are looking for the unskilled labor cost per unit. Then you say 5 times by 12 and this will give us 60 rands. This will give us 60 rands. So now we are done with the unskilled. Then we go to the skilled ones. We go to the skilled. And you say with regard to the skilled, how many hours do the skilled laborers take to complete one unit of product A1? Because we have to allocate the labor cost for product A1, then allocate the skilled labor cost for product B2. We have done that uh, also with regard to the unskilled. So now we say how many hours do the skilled laborers take to complete one unit of product A1? The skilled laborers take six hours to complete product A1 and they are being paid 20 rand. Therefore now six hours times by the rate per hour we get the cost of the skilled direct labor cost per unit. It will be 6 times that by 20. 6, we multiply this by 20. Therefore, now we say 6 times by 20. This will give us 120 rands, which is the cost of the skilled direct labor cost per unit of product A1. 
Then after we look for the hours that the skilled laborers takes to complete one unit of product B2. It takes five hours to complete product B2 and the skilled laborers are paid 20 rand. Here the skilled. Five hours and the rate per hour is 20 rand. Therefore now it's five by 20. That will be five by 20. Then after I will say five by 20. That will give us 100 rands. That will be the direct labor cost per unit of a product B2 for the skilled labors. Therefore, now from here we can add all these costs where we say 100. Let me start with the product A1 507 plus 120 plus 120. This will give us 7147. This will give us 7147. Then after we say 624 plus 60 plus 100. And this gives us 7184. This gives us 7184. Therefore now <clears throat> this will be our cost per unit variable cost per unit variable cost per unit total variable cost per unit total variable cost per unit per unit Total direct, I just want not to skip that, total direct variable cost per unit. Because if I'm saying variable, it's just not correct. Total direct variable cost per unit. So now, this will be the last part of the question. I think we've answered now all that was required to us. Uh, and the last requirement was this one, which was number F. And with that, guys, being said, I have covered all that was needed. Uh, but please just take note of the fact that I made a, an error here in the beginning. But apologies because I have corrected that. Uh, with that, guys, I will say God be with you. Thank you.